Hi, my name is Sharon Carr. I'm a storyteller based in the Midlands. I'm originally from Canada, but I've lived in this country for many, many years. The story I'm going to tell you concerns a storyteller. There was once a man with the gift of story. Every time he sat down in the village square, people's eyes would light up. They would stop what they were doing and gather round. His winged silvery words would lift them up out of the humdrumness of their lives and take them on flights and journeys to mythological, magical, fantastical places. They loved his stories and they would tell him. Oh, they'd say, it was a story. It touched my heart. I was feeling so low they'd say, but your stories have made me happy. You, my friend, are certainly a true and master storyteller. And so the words of praise flowed over him, and over time it all went to his head. He began to strut around the village expecting people to bow before his feet, because after all, he was the master storyteller. He had a beautiful cloak of many different colours made that when he sat down to tell his tales would swirl around his feet. He began to look at the village of his birth and think, hmm, this is a rather parochial place. The people are rather insular. I need to leave. I need to spread my talents and my stories to a wider audience. And so he left the village of his birth. And he travelled the world, going to this country, that country, this country and that country. And everywhere he went, his fame grew. People were all waiting expectantly, loving his stories, loving his words. But after many years of being an itinerant, travelling storyteller, he began to feel those little tugs at his heartstrings that he wanted to be with people who knew him and whom he knew. He wanted to return home, which he did, returning to the village of his birth, fully expecting to pick up from where he'd left off all those years before but little realising that people, events and things had moved on. So, the first time, he returned to the village square and sat down, fully expecting people to stop what they were doing to gather at his feet. Well, he was in for a surprise, because as soon as he opened his mouth and went beyond once upon a time, somebody interrupted him. Oh, you can't tell that story. That's John's story. He tried again. Again, somebody nipped in. No, you can't tell that. That's Alice's story. Oh, she has such a special way of telling it. And he tried again and again. And each time it was the same reaction. And what he couldn't believe, his ears, what he was hearing was, the stories that everybody else was claiming were theirs had been his stories that he told them all those years before. Well, this filled him with rage. Thieves, he said to himself. How dare they? Those are my stories. I'm going to make a complaint. And he went to the village's wise man. And he poured forth his fury in a tirade of flaming words. And the wise man listened with patience and forbearance. And when the storyteller finally ended and said, well, what are you going to do about it? The wise man replied, my friend, bring me a feather pillow. A feather pillow, said the storyteller. What do you want with a feather pillow? Do as I say, my friend, responded the wise man. Bring me a feather pillow. Well, my the storyteller, much perplexed, did as he was told and returned with a feather pillow, which he gave to the wise man. The wise man raised it above his head, took a very sharp knife 
and slit it down the middle, and the pillow collapsed outwards, and the feathers came fluttering and flittering around their feet in a shower like snowflakes in a blizzard. That, my friend, said the wise man, are your story. Once they have left your lips, they are carried into the hearts of your listeners. They no longer belong to you. The storyteller, humbled, said, but what can I do about it? My friend, replied the wise man, let them go. That's all you can do. Let them go.